Okay, this is a continuation of the previous video. So I want to talk about what kind of predictions uh, fit Bayesian inference. So I told you that there I haven't seen any predictions by creationism, but that doesn't mean there haven't been any attempts to make uh, to find such predictions by creationists. So I just want to clarify things. Firstly, um, the false prediction. They don't really understand what a prediction is. So they tell me something like uh, complexity is a prediction by creationism. But that's not actually a prediction because we've known that things have been complex for thousands of years. I'm talking about a uh, real prediction, something that you guess before you do the experiment, and you do the experiment, and you find the result for it. So a good example for this is Tiktaalik. Uh, we predicted that we would find an animal with both uh, features of fish and land animals, and we'd find it at a particular part of the world in a particular layer. Now, you don't have to accept that this is descended from anything. Uh, the, the fact that it has features of both fish and mammals, um, as fish and uh, land animals, is clear. There's no doubt about it, right? Uh, it's observed. It's not uh, interpreted, right? And uh, so you don't have, but God could have made it that way. It doesn't matter. But the point is, we found it. The scientists did. You know, they found it in exactly the place that they expected to. So how could uh, dating methods be wrong? How could evolution be wrong if we could go if uh, we could go to a particular part of the world and uh, find this fossil? You know, clearly we understand something about science, and uh, you guys don't because you haven't made any predictions. So that's a good uh, prediction, um, good uh, example of what a real prediction is. You know, they. They expected to find it, and they found it. Um, so, so, and that tells you about the how our level of knowledge and w the real importance of prediction. You know, no matter what you think, you know, it doesn't matter that you think that dating uh, methods don't work. Like, I don't even know how to explain, waste my time explaining to you what your logical, what your fallacy is, what you don't understand about dating methods. The fact that scientists could predict something so improbable shows that we have a really good understanding of dating methods and evolution. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's just a good example of the importance of predictions, um, and also uh, uh, creationists uh, say that uh, religious uh, predictions uh, in uh, the revelations. Well, the thing, the problem with this is they aren't scientific. Like they aren't in a setting which is very controlled, and we can observe and we can make sure that it, they are indeed predictions, right? Um, and if you still argue that no, they're valid predictions, well, I can show you that uh, many religious predictions. In Hinduism, I'm a Hindu, right? So uh, Krishna had made thousands of predictions. Rama has made thousands of predictions. There are many uh, sages and uh, saints that made thousands of predictions. So, and I would never claim this to be uh, real scientific predictions because they're not done in a controlled setting. So you need to find a controlled setting um, before you make such claims. So um, good luck with that, finding predictions, uh, creationists. So uh, now I want to talk about... Um, some other uh, videos and bits of confusions and stuff about, um, so I was uh, in my nested hierarchy video, um, I said that nested hierarchy uh, falls apart if we don't find that feature. Well, what I meant is you, you, know, you don't have like a, a half a nested hierarchy or like quarter of a nested hierarchy. Either it exists for that feature, like say an eye or a nose or any other feature, either it exists across the species or it doesn't for those for particular features that you're looking for, right? So it doesn't disprove the concept of nested hierarchy. All it does is it shows you that that particular feature doesn't show nested hierarchy, right? So, um, so it's a very important distinction. And the reason for that is you can't have half of a nested hierarchy. So it's an observation. Either it exists or it doesn't. That's a point I was trying to make, right? So, um, some people have found uh, some ERVs that don't show nested hierarchy. So that's where this point comes up, right? That doesn't disprove nested hierarchy. Just for those particular features, just for those ERVs, it disproves it. And I admit that. I would never use those ERVs as evidence for evolution because they don't show nested hierarchy. But there are thousands of other independent infections that cause uh, nested hierarchy uh, in other ERVs, right? They're all independent infections. Right, and uh, we see nested hierarchy in a lot of other places, and of course, uh, in the uh, in the there's a reason for this uh, for for those particular ERVs that don't show nested hierarchy. I think there's uh, three or four. Um, there's a paper in which they say like a family of like ten or twelve ERVs. They, they talk about it, but they state very specifically that uh, only two of those ERVs, C ERVs, 
of the entire family don't show Nestor hierarchy. Uh, the others, they didn't even see some of them. They didn't even sequence properly. Uh, they don't mention about anything about anything peculiar about the others. So they clearly mention two, uh, two subfamilies. They say very clearly, and in that particular paper, there's another one with another ERV, and uh, maybe I could say maximum there are about five ERVs that did not show um, Nestor hierarchy out of hundreds that fit with the predictions of evolution. Um, now, uh, we do have an explanation for this. It's called a fixation of alleles. Now, I'm not going to argue right now and explain to you how fixation works and all that other stuff. There's a lot of evidence for it, and I'm going to post some in my description box. We have observed uh, the fixation of a particular ERV occurring in, um, in the middle of fixation, occurring in human beings. Uh, the other uh, ERVs for that same family have already been fixed. For this particular one, it hasn't been. I also provide a video by Ishta, five very good uh, videos. Um, this one particularly uh, explains visually uh, how fixation occurs. And there's lots of evidence for it, so I'm not going to waste my time arguing about whether it occurs or not because we have evidence for it. But even if we did it, right, even if uh, there was no explanation for how this occurred, it wouldn't matter anyway. Because as uh, Bayesian inference says, only pro positive predictions matter, negations don't matter, right? But we do have an explanation, right? But even if you continue to argue this point, right, um, let me remind you that uh, Newton's laws don't work for um, the orbit of Mercury. Uh, that's the only planet which uh, Newton can, uh, our usage of uh, Newton's equations can't predict um, the orbit with all the other uh, uh, or orbits, we can predict it very well, just not that one. Does this mean that uh, you we have disproved Newton's laws? That doesn't make any sense. You know, uh, nobody ever says that. So this is a huge logical fallacy, and it's very apparent, and not only in my mathematical equation, right, which you have to disprove, right, but it's also apparent in the examples that we show. Newton's you you have Newton's laws, even though we can't fully explain. Um, Mercury's orbit. We have no explanation for Mercury's orbit, right? At least we have an explanation for these ERVs, right? We have lots of evidence for it, but uh, we have no explanation for the orbit of Mercury. Does that mean we disproved it? No, it just means it's incomplete. So that's that ERV fixation. Very important evidence, but doesn't mean anything. You need predictions. Um, now I want to make two other points. One about uh, function of ERVs. Uh, in my video about ERVs, you'll see how the, uh, evolution has an explanation about the about why ERVs are functional. Creationism also has an explanation, but as uh, I said earlier, explanations don't mean anything. You can explain anything. You need predictions. So I'm not even uh, creationism has an explanation for mean anything, right? Um, and the other point I wanted to make is uh, this question: How do we know that uh, ERVs came from viral infections, right? How do we, uh, why didn't the viral infections, viruses themselves come from ERVs, right? That That's the question that people pose. Well, that's the thing is we have lots of scientific evidence for why this is the case. Every ERV contains certain genes for the capsids, uh, for the uh, um, capsid and uh, the uh, reverse transcriptase and integrase, right? These are all important for virus to get integrated into the cell, right? Um, furthermore, uh, we find and there the perfect distances in all ERVs are in the exact distances that we see in uh, viruses in the lab, right? In the test tube, you see the, the same sequences in uh, ERVs and uh, LTR sequence that uh, these these ERVs were once independent, otherwise or, or reverse transcriptase would not work on them, otherwise and we wouldn't see those LTRs. We see it, so we know it was an independent RNA molecule.